In this video, we're going to discuss what a negative externality is in economics. So a negative externality occurs when you do something that imposes costs on another person without reimbursing that person for the harm that you've done to them. So let's say that you play the radio really loud at night and it makes it hard for your next door neighbor to study for his or her exam the next morning and so then they get a bad grade and so now you've imposed costs on that person by your actions and so it's not just people that can create negative externalities we could also have companies do that with things like pollution so let's say that I happen to live near a lead smelting company and so they smelt lead and the, the tailings from the lead can create pollution that contaminates the, the soil and it can also contaminate water so let's say that there is a river nearby and I, I live near this lead smelter in this river and so there are fish in the river and I like to go fishing in that river but because of the lead smelting process it ends up killing some of the fish some of the fish die and so I can catch fewer fish because of this lead smelting process so it's it's basically it is imposing a cost on me now also there could be other there could be health costs and, and so forth but bottom line is that the lead smelter is taking an action it's producing some some good that is creating a cost for me but I'm not being reimbursed I'm not being consulted or anything like that so I want to graph this out for you to see basically how this would work in a free market how a, a negative externality uh, would occur and, and what it would look like so let's say we've got the price of smelting lead and then we have the quantity of lead to be smelt, uh, smelted so we've got the price and we've got our quantity and let's map out the demand curve so here's our downward sloping demand curve and the demand is also the marginal social benefit so you can think of that as the marginal social benefit and you might be thinking, hey, what is the social benefit to smelting lead? Well, we use lead in batteries and stuff like that. So there is some benefit to smelting lead. And so from a societal standpoint, we can look at our marginal social benefit, but then we can also look at the marginal social cost. So let's say that's our curve here of the marginal social cost. And that's our, so this is the social cost and the optimal amount of lead that should be smelted from the standpoint of society is going to occur where the marginal social benefit is equal to the marginal social cost so that's going to be right here that's going to be our optimal quantity of lead from a social standpoint so this is our we'll call it the socially efficient or socially optimal amount of lead and let's let's use let's say that that's a hundred thousand tons I have no idea if that's a realistic amount but that there's a hundred thousand tons of lead that is smelted that is optimal now here is the nature of the externality for the lead smelting company their cost is lower than the marginal social cost because they only consider here's their, their they consider the marginal private cost and by private cost I mean the cost to the smelter itself right to that company itself they're not thinking necessarily about what what's happening to me with the fish I catch or, or things like that right they're just looking at for their firm what is the marginal cost to their firm of smelting an additional ton of lead and so their marginal private cost is lower than the, the social cost and the reason is is that the social cost the social cost includes two things so it includes the private cost the cost to the lead smelting company plus what's called the external cost that's the cost to other people in society aside from this smelting company so it's those two things but the marginal private cost does not include the external cost and what does that mean that means that in a free market the amount of lead that is actually going to be smelted is going to be Q it's going to be some amount larger Let, let's just say that it's hundred and thirty thousand tons and the, the reason is is that the when the lead smelting company is making the decision of how much lead should we smelt 
They're going to look at their private costs, the cost to them, the marginal cost of, of smelting additional ton, and they're going to go, oh, where the marginal private cost equals their benefit, that's where that's the amount that they're going to smelt. So this is this is the amount, this is going to be the equilibrium. This is the amount produced by the free market, the amount of, of lead that's going to be smelted. Now you see that this is higher. The amount that is that is produced by the free market. This is the most the free market. That amount is actually higher. So basically, from a social standpoint, there's a lot more lead that's being smelted than what is what is optimal. And and from the social standpoint, we're considering all the costs and benefits to everybody, right? Not just for that particular firm. And so we're smelting too much lead. And and you think and the reason is is that this smelting company. The, the smelting company, as they're making the decision of whether to do this, they're not considering the cost imposed on people like me or you. They're thinking about their own private cost, their own marginal cost. Now, that is going to cause them to produce the quant or to produce a quantity of lead that is higher than what would be socially efficient. So this is a market failure. This is a negative externality here. And there are several ways to address that. And one is with a Peguvian tax, which is a corrective tax. There's also, you can have marketable permits or cap and trade you probably heard of. And then also there's a thing called coast bargaining that we'll talk about in some of the videos to come.